Who wouldn't serve a God like the God that we serve? Hallelujah, Lord.
God. We thank you today, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We got to praise, and we got to get it out. Why? Because of the goodness of our God. Hallelujah, Lord. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Hallelujah, Lord. Ah, oh, God, I thank you even now. Thank you, Lord. We thank God for the Holy Spirit that is moving in the house on today. Thank you, Lord. We welcomed him in, and he came on in. So now we take this opportunity to welcome our online visitors. Hallelujah, Lord. To our first-time visitors that are in the sanctuary. Can you raise your hand, our first-time visitors in the sanctuary? Hallelujah, Lord. We thank God for our first-time visitors. Yes, oh God. We pray that you know that you are welcome. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank God that he laid us on your mind. And you stopped by to worship with us on today. So anytime that you are led by the Holy Spirit, come back and worship with us. You're always welcome. Online visitors, we thank you for joining in with us. You're welcome as well. We're going to turn it around. We have our digital welcome at this time. After our digital welcome, and we welcome to other, welcome the next to will be one purpose. Three churches one in purpose. covenant fellowship. Three churches united in as covenant one fellowship. To pray, united. praise, worship, build, and perfect for God's kingdom. We invite you to connect with us for our weekly services. Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 10.30 a.m. Tuesday Bible study for adults and children in person and Zoom, 7 p.m. Wednesday Word Wisdom with Counselor Billy Washington via Zoom, 7.30 p.m. The Prayer Wall, 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m., all in the Central Standard Time Zones. For more information, visit our websites. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us in one purpose. with whether it's an embrace a high five a fist bump let's show the joy of the lord on today in one purpose we welcome you also on the live stream come on say welcome to welcome church to Yeah. 
Get it tired about you. Once again, for joining us here in person as well as on our live stream, Facebook and YouTube. Once again, if this is your first time and you have not received a gift from our ushers, just kind of make your way in your hand and let them know, where is my gift? And those of you that are on our live stream for the very first time, please let us know where it is that you are chiming in for, for we can acknowledge you. I have quite a bit to do this morning, so I'm going to move quite a bit quickly with my announcements. Children's Church does follow immediately following offering. Make sure you follow Minister Tasha for ages three and nine. We are also having our very first one here, in the, here at this location, our baptism ceremony following morning service. On, I'm going to say that one more time. Our very first one, our baptism ceremony outside immediately following service. Thank God. I know Brother Corey has invited half of the neighborhood, <laughs> so we're excited for him and all of the candidates that are going to be baptized immediately following service. Our regular Bible studies are Tuesday and Wednesday. The information is in your bulletin. Coming up on this Saturday, this Saturday, it is a fourth Saturday. Some of you probably got the dates kind of mixed up, but it is fourth Saturday. On this Saturday, please arrive as early as 730 so we can prepare for our monthly giveaway. And then, of course, on next Sunday, we hope that you will stay and celebrate with Bishop and I for our 39th anniversary and appreciation. Apostle Helen Epps is the speaker. Hop Shop is always open after service. We're going to, first of all, before I acknowledge our cancer survivor, we had a couple of birthdays. So I'm going to let Lady Lady Joyce, we call each other Lady and Lady because we get each other's name mixed up for some reason, is going to acknowledge a birthday. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I had a young guy, a young friend of mine that had a birthday on Thursday. And it's Pastor Billy Washington. <laughs> and he is so humble, y'all. He is so humble. My birthday was on the 14th. That was last sa or Saturday before last. And so he celebrated with me even on yesterday. And then Thursday, I rushed out the door. <laughs> saying happy birthday and um then later on that night i didn't even do anything for him that night later on he, he was excuse me he was invited not later on but he had an invitation to celebrate uh birthday of his nephew so he was yet giving on his day of celebration so i wanted publicly to uh, wish him a happy birthday, even though it's be like belated birthday, and um, just acknowledge him on today. So, Pastor, come and give your gifts, baby. <laughs> and I think Rayanne has a gift also. Uh, anybody that, uh, as far as Rosa Sharon, you can do it at this time to give. <laughs> Say happy birthday, Dad. Um, you are absolutely the best um, dad that anybody could ask for. I mean, growing up, you and you still are a great example, um, not only to myself and my brother, but to your nephew, your other relatives, and my husband, in the absence of his father that passed away. Your birthday is on the same day that his father passed away. So it's, instead of being a day of sadness, it's a day of celebration. 
And so I just want to thank you for your sacrifices that you've made all throughout all throughout our years. I want to thank you for your example of love, your consistency, and being somebody that not just myself but others, uh, your spiritual sons and daughters, could always look to and know that you were going to be solid. Because a lot of people don't have solid male role models in their lives. So I just thank you for being that not only for myself, but for others as well. I know we got to move on, <laughs> but I love you. Happy birthday. Sister Karen, if you can get your camera out. Um, I did not forget that it was your birthday. Uh, you can sit down, Pastor. Lady, lady. She likes bling, and I love scarves, so I gave you both. So to both of you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Let's celebrate the Washingtons. Dad Washington, we appreciate you so much. And I believe Bishop owe you some sketches, so I just kind of put it out there publicly. So uh, he owe you some sketches. Amen. We, we honor and celebrate them. At this time, we're pausing for a moment to honor our cancer survivors for the year 2023. And as I call your name out, would you come and stand right here? First, honoring Tangie Brown. Sister Tangie was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2008. She had surgery. She's going to come up here, Lady Washington. She's going to come up here. Come on, come on. She was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2008, and I want you to stand right there. Had surgery and has been cancer-free for over 15 years. Okay, they don't have, they don't have room for this. Okay. It's Brittany Wright. Sister Brittany. She came to one of our services. I didn't recognize her. You were looking so beautiful. She was diagnosed with endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, and breast cancer in 2007. She has been cancer-free since 2022. Come on, let's celebrate her. Kim Kennard, or Kimberly Kennard. I always tell her that she's a walking miracle. She was diagnosed with kidney cancer, heart cancer and liver cancer in 2010. Her, when she had surgery, her right kidney was removed. They removed the cancer from her heart and stopped her heart from beating, a little bit lower, son, for eight hours through a procedure called total hypothermic circulatory arrest and was in a medically induced coma for 11 days in the hospital for a month and rehab for six months because she had to learn how to walk and do everything all over again. She has been cancer free for 13 years. I tell her she's a walking miracle. Woo. Sister Brenda Smith, come on down. Let us stand right there. Sister Brenda Smith was diagnosed with stomach cancer in 2020, right here in the center, right here, right here. And she has been cancer-free. I remember when she came in this year. It's cancer-free this year, 2023. Elder Micheline Neal was diagnosed with breast cancer right here, right over here, Elder Neal, in 2021. She had a lumpectomy, radiation, and chemo pill, and is still undergoing preventative treatment, but... The latest test result reveals she is cancer free. And our last honoree is Sister Latoya Webb. Come on down, sweetheart. She was diagnosed with cervical, can cervical cancer stage two in 2018 and lung cancer stage two in March, 2023. She is currently undergoing chemotherapy treatments, but these are her words. She said, I'm feeling good and I'm breathing great. Come on, let's celebrate her at this time. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry, Mother Lois Dean Arnold. 
also, thank you, Tasha. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2005. She had a mastectomy, completed chemotherapy in 2006. There's no further diagnosis over her life and she has been cancer free for over 18 years. Come on to everyone stand and celebrate these awesome, awesome cancer survivors. I'll let you take the pictures. Come closer together, precious women. Come closer together so they can get your picture. And we can also see you live. I'm gonna get out the way. Come closer together. We want you to. Take your pictures, everyone. Take your pictures, celebrate. Come on, one more time, celebrate them, celebrate them, celebrate them, amen. And we also have a certificate for you. My daughter will give it to you. This is what it says, and then I'm done. It says, a certificate of celebration is hereby bestowed upon each of them, reborn from the ashes of illness, a warrior whose strength and courage burns bright, a survivor who has endured the worst of times, and an overcomer who conquered the darkest of nights by the grace of God. We celebrate you as a true survivor this 22nd day of October, 2023. God bless you ladies, we love you. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for allowing us. I wanted to make sure that on another year go by without honoring and celebrating these women. True miracles that are standing before you. And at this time, I'm going to turn the first service over to our very own bishop. We'll take us into the time of worshiping through giving and introducing our speaker. Blessings unto everyone. Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Amen. We got a lot to celebrate. Amen. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised and magnified and lifted up. God is an awesome God. We just thank God for his awesomeness because truly, God is worthy of all the praise. Can't nobody, the song says, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. Nobody. We just thank God for truly God is awesome. Thank you for those who came out today. Amen. We thank the Lord for, for his awesomeness. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get the awkward out the way. We got a lot to do. We got baptism right after service. Amen. Matter of fact, we're going to start the baptism service in here, and then we're going to proceed to the back, amen, and we're going to baptize the candidates, amen? All right. I want to use this, this offering. If it's offering time, you know what that means? That's harvest time, amen? Amen. I want to use a little topic today, sowing in a time of crisis, sowing in a time of crisis. In the book of Mark 12, 40, 41 through 42, I'm just going to paraphrase for time. It was Jesus had set in the temple. And at that time, they would have, they had like 13 different um, offering things, they, reciprocals for they would come and drop their offering. And that, that was for them to help those who were in need, help the keeping up of the, of the temple. And Jesus sat there and watched it. And he said all the rich folks came and they gave great big sums out of their out of their abundance. And then it says it was one woman, a, a widow woman who had two mites. That's all she had. That's all she had to live off of. That was, that was it. And she gave both of them. And Jesus called his disciple and said, look, she gave more than anybody in the whole house. Now, we talk about people who are giving some big offerings, but look, Christ is actually manifests the size of the seed in the eyes of God. When, you, when you're going through something financially and you sow a seed out of that lack, amen, it, it magnifies the offering to God. That God is able to see the sacrifice that you're willing to make, amen, even in that time. See, that's the time you should give your best offerings because that's the time where God can open up a greater door for you because it's a greater sacrifice. If I was a multi-millionaire and I gave $50,000, that ain't gave God nothing. You ain't hearing me. My interest alone, the, my interest alone, even on, on a monthly basis, is more than $50,000. <laughs> let, me, let me help you. Look what it says. Your seed will increase in it, and in it, 
influence with God because of your crisis. Jesus was watching the offering being received one day. Later, he shared with his disciples, this poor widow had cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasure. For all they did cast in, a cast in, in their abundance, but she cast in what she had. And then Jesus told his disciples, come see. Her financial crisis enlarged her seed in the eyes of God. See, when you, see, the thing is, it's easy to sow with a pocket full of money. But can you sow when it's tight? I remember when we was, when me and my wife, even we, I, had, I told you the testimony how I, I got up and said one Sunday evening, if I didn't have a job, amen, I would praise God. And so God told me to go full-time ministry, so I didn't have a job. And then, and then about two or three months later, I got bold and said, if nobody had a job, I still praise God. And my wife got fired. So nobody had a job in the house. Tasha's on the way. Amen. She's on the way. We had two brand new cars. So we had two car notes, rent. We had all this going on. And nobody getting paid. I, I was getting a big salary. I was getting I was getting hundred dollars a week, Pastor. That was my salary. A hundred dollars a week. And when I paid, and I still paid my tithes, which left me with ninety dollars. We live 24 miles away from the church. You say, well, that ain't far. It is in California because that's an hour commute both ways with traffic. So we and we had service. We had service on Saturday morning, Saturday night. We had service on Tuesday, on Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday night. And we was coming back and forth all those nights, all those days. But we never stopped paying the tithe. And because we did not stop paying the tithe, don't ask me how we made it. We never was late on a car note. We was never late on, on rent. We would never had no lack because we still sold in a time of crisis. See, the thing is, God want to know, can you, is, can you trust him when you don't know where your next meal coming from? Can you trust him, amen, when, you, when everything looks bad, amen? See, I don't stop giving God his because something happened. All right. So look what it goes on. She gave more than everyone else in her, in her, in her, in his opinion because of her crisis. Her crisis. That's why it's important to plant a seed when you are back, when your back is against the wall and you have little. See, that's the time to that's the time to be prayerful. That's the time to be strategic and say, Lord, where do I need to sow this seed? Because I need a harvest. The widow woman, I'm gonna close right here. The widow woman, the Bible says that he told when 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 Elijah said, It's not gonna rain until I say it's gonna rain. And the Bible says that the, way, that the river dried up. And he said, I go to Zarephath. There's a woman, that I, a widow woman that I commanded to sustain you. She's supposed, to, she's supposed to take care of you. When he gets there, she's picking up some sticks to make her last meal to die. And she's supposed to take care of him. Her confession, we getting ready to die. Why did God send him to her? Because she was the greatest one that needed a, had a need. She needed a miracle more than anybody. And he said, make me a cake first. She had to sow first. And when she sowed the seed, that little cake, the Bible says the meal never ran out. And the oil never ceased. Because she had to sow the seed. See, you say, when I get it, I'm going to sow it. No, you got to sow it what you got. Because when you sow from where you at, amen, you, God can take you to where you want to go. It's your seed is the key. Your job, a lot of times, don't have enough to sustain you. But what do sustain you is that seed. Because if I put it in God's hand, he can multiply it. Amen? God gives increase. He said, if you pay the tithes and give the offering, he said, he will rebuke the devourer, which means the seed eater. He rebuked the seed eater for your behalf. Why do you say seed eater? Because either they won't eat up the crops. They wouldn't eat up the grapes. They wouldn't eat up the vines. They wouldn't eat up the things. He said, I'm going to rebuke them. I'm going to keep them off of your stuff. And then I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out rooms with room that you won't even have enough to, 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 to behold, to, to take it in. See, God has a way to bless his people. It's up to us to obey. That's all he's looking for, obedience. See, you're trying to figure it out. 
Don't figure it out. Just believe him. Amen. Amen. We stand and we get ready to give at this time. Amen. Put your offer prepared. This is fourth Sunday. Amen. This is this is 36 vision 36 23. 23 36. Amen. Vision 23. Yeah, 30 23. I gotta get it right myself. Father, we thank you for this time we're able to sow seed. We ask that you would bless your people according to your word. Lord, as we sow, Lord, you said if we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, run it over. Shall men give unto our bosom. Now, Lord, bless your people according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You'll be led from the rear by the ushers. Follow their direction. generosity you're giving on today. Well, it is fourth Sunday, and I believe, amen, if any brothers want to help us out, amen, you can come at this time and help us out, amen. At this time, we're going to have our report. always to go to first. But anyway, team co-pastor, anybody lacking, uh, anybody lacking or, you know, want to wanna make sure you join the team over here, or you forgot to give, or you just want to connect to the anointing. Thank you, sister. Oh, Lord, I, see, see, yes, I need somebody, I need an envelope. An envelope. Pastor is reporting. All minds clear. <laughs> Five hundred and fifty-six dollars.
Okay. I still got hands uh, wanting to give to Mother Dev's team. So, so far, we have $270 that I've counted so far. All right. Well, any other men want to help us out before we before we move on? All right. So I think King Co Pastor got four hundred and no, no, I got five hundred and fifty-six. Get it right. All Get right. it right. All right. All right. So it's my crown. No. Well, well, we got we got five hundred and sixty dollars. Oh, it's not over. <laughs> <laughs> we got 500 in. Oh, my niece right here says she adding $20. We got 580. I'm going to add 40. 585. We got 620. We got 584. <laughs> Y'all got to give me the money. Come on, give me the money. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The men. Come on, men. Stand up. We're going to win this one. need some help with some math. Come on. I got 604. We have 620. We have 680. I have 639. We have 660. <laughs> all right, men, take your, let's take all our All right, y'all got it, y'all got on, it. Come on, let's take our run. Praise the Lord for the brethren. Praise the Lord. And we had to make them sweat, team. We are still building, so we got a new building in the back. It's debt free, amen. We didn't have to take out no loan, and so we are almost finished. I'm almost finished in there. And when I get next month, we're going to put phase two on the building, we're going to put the bathrooms in and the kitchen next month. So, amen. So, that's what this money is going towards, amen. And then after that, we're going to add on another. Thousand square feet on that building, and then I'll be finished, and then we're going to break ground for the tiny homes. Amen. Amen. We thank God. God is awesome. Amen. Well, it's time to hear the word of God. Amen. Come on, I say, I just want you to take, preach, Pastor Walker, and I owe you some shoes. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus. Come on, stand on your feet and give Jesus praise. Come on, if Jesus been good to you, open up your mouth and begin to bless his name. Come on, stand up your feet and lift your hands up before your head and begin to bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! If he healed you, if he delivered you, if he brought you out without a doubt, open up your mouth and give him your best praise. Come on, run every devil out of here. Give him praise. praise and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you know he died on that cross for you, if you know he shed his blood for you, and that all your sins may be forgiven, I want you to open up your mouth and just tell him how much you love him this morning. Let him hear you this morning. How much you appreciate him. Bless you, Lord. Wonderful Savior. Mighty God. You're my rock. You're the strength of my life. You're my fortress and refuge. Glory be to God. His name is a strong tower where the righteous run in, Brandon, and they are saved. How many believers say amen? Glory be to God. We thank God for Bishop Donald H. Butler and his lovely wife, co-pastor Butler. Let's put our hands together for them. Amen. Wonderful man of God. Thank God for my friend, my ace coon boom, Billy 
Ray Washington, Counselor Washington, big time preacher, teacher of the Word of God. Thank God for him. Amen. I thank God for everyone in the house of God today. And I can't forget about my sweetheart. She's probably watching online. She had surgery uh, last week. She's doing well. She's getting around, moving around in, in the house. And she's starting to try to cook, cook a little bit. But she's still in, uh, going through a little pain. But if anybody knows Sister Walker, she ain't going to let that stop her. Amen. So uh, I'm thinking she'd probably be here next Sunday, Lord willing. And uh, she's, she's just amazing. Amen. Thank you, baby. I love you. I appreciate you. Everything you do for me. God bless you. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. Now, we have a baptismal service after this service. So uh, I'm not going to try to preach long and have you jumping and running over seats and all that. I'm just going to give you the word of God, and we're going to praise God for those that are being baptized. Amen. How many know that's a big step? Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Colossians chapter 3. And I'm going to read in your hearing this morning verses 1 through I'm going to say for time five. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Say that with me all over the house. My life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You may be seated in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and tell them this. One life to live. Amen. Look at two or three people more and tell them that I have one life to live. I have to make this life God has afforded me to count. Amen. I'm supposed to live this life that God has granted me to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say life is a gift from God. And it's your responsibility to choose if you're going to live this life with Christ and God or you're going to live a life by your own guidelines and your own rules. This morning, I was sharing with co-pastors and some mothers. I got my days mixed up. I thought today was third Sunday. I didn't know I was going to be preaching this Sunday. But how many know that when God been speaking to you all week, you have something to share with the people of God? Amen. Somebody say, God is able to turn the table. So the first thing I want you to see is the subtype is your life is hidden with Christ in God. You know, they had that soap opera, Bishop, one life to live. And I was at work the other day, Bishop, I was driving down 287, I exit 157 and headed toward Cooper Street. And I seen this lady's car, Pastor Washington, at the side of my eye. And she had on her car, my rule, my life, my rules, my life. I said in my mind, that's a bold sister right there because it's God's life she has, and, and if she has any kind of wisdom, she has to realize she has to live that life according to God's rules. Amen? How many know that it ain't your life? When Jesus shed his blood and you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, your life became his life. And the Bible says that your life is hidden in Christ in God. But the first thing I want you to see this morning, he says, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated. If you're going to remain hidden in God, you're going to have to have your mind set and focus on some things God has told you to do. Somebody say, set your mind 
set your minds on things above. And we're dealing with the Colossian church. The Apostle Paul was writing to the Colossian church because the false teachers were instructing the Colossians to concentrate on temporal observations. In other words, the, the false teacher was coming in and telling them, no, just, just focus on temporal things. Focus on your house and how you're dressing and what you're wearing and how flamboyant you can look and uh, all the things that's mediocre. They wanted them to be focused on worldly and materialism. How many know that materialism has come in the church? You got a bunch of preachers preaching about housing and cars and prophesying and about business and lectures and God is saying, I'm not in that. God is saying, I want my people to surrender to my will and my plan for their life. But God is saying this morning, I'm looking for a people that be consistent in their service unto me. And if you're going to be consistent in your service unto the Lord, you have to have determined obedience. Look at two, three people say, you've got to have determined obedience when you come to the Lord. Since you have come to Christ, are you an asset or a liability to the kingdom? If you, when you came to God, has the kingdom of God benefit from employing you? How many souls have you won? How many devils have you cast out? How, how, how many times you got lost in praise and worship to the point that you called other people on your road to start praising and worshiping God? Somebody say, determine obedience. See, I had to make up my mind when I got out of prison to start serving the Lord with my whole heart. Because I want to serve my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with my whole heart, I had to distance myself from some people so I got myself together. See, some of your biggest hindrance that's stopping you from setting your mind on things above is the people you hanging around with. You're trying to get free from drugs and alcoholism, but you still want to hang around people that's smoking and drinking alcohol. You want to get free from people that's dealing drugs, but you still want to socialize and rub elbows with drug dealers. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Somebody say, set your mind. Because I've learned this, brother Ronnie, if you can get your mind out, you can get everything else out. The Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace if you put your mind on the rock, Christ Jesus. Can I get a witness this morning? How many ever put their mind on him? Somebody say, set your mind on things above. Paul instructs the people of God to concentrate on the eternal realities of heaven. Somebody say, you've got to concentrate on the eternal realities of heaven. Are you doing that with your life? Are you so caught up with your career and caught up with housemaking, caught up with working and striving to make ends meet that you don't focus on the realities of heaven? See, everybody in this room is going to live somewhere eternally. Either you're going to live eternally with God in heaven or you're going to live eternally in hell with the devil and his demons. But what I've learned, church, it's your choice. God don't send no one to heaven. The Holy Spirit showed me that very clearly. The Holy Spirit told me no one goes to heaven, no one goes to hell because God don't love them. They go to hell because they don't love God. Who am I preaching to this morning? Somebody said you got to love him. In the hard times, in the good times, when people pass away, when financial crisis come to your life, you've got to make up your mind that God loves you and you love God. That you're going to be in this thing for ride or die. No matter what come your way, the winds may blow, storm may come. But you've got to open up your mouth and say, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast of the Lord. How many love him this morning? Somebody said you got to set your mind on him. The Greek word for set emphasizes an ongoing decision. Christians must continually dis discipline themselves to focus on eternal realities instead of temporal realities on this earth. What you saying, man of God? 
we got to get our minds on what God has called us to do. Amen? And we have to have consistency built down inside of us. And we have to be determined to live a life pleasing to God. Co-pastor, you know what God dropped in my spirit a couple of uh, weeks before last? I was teaching Sunday school, and then the Holy Ghost dropped in my spirit. He said, a lot of people are giving me thanksgiving with their mouth, and I appreciate that. But very few Christians are giving me thanksgiving with their life. See, when you're really thankful to God, you want to live holy. You want to quit cussing. You want to quit gossiping and backbiting and slandering. Who am I preaching to this morning? See, when you really love God, you're going to do what he said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The only evidence, the only proof that you love God is the life you live. What are you doing with your life? One, Pratt, Pratt, one preacher told me, if you look at your checkbook, you sh they show you what you love. Where you be spending your money at? See, anytime you love something, you're going to take care of it. Because I love my wife, anniversary time, I'm going to give her something. Christmas going to, amen? Or if I just feel like blessing her, bring her some roses. There ain't no got to be no special occasion. Bring some roses and lay them on the bed and say, I love you. I appreciate you cooking and cleaning. I, I appreciate you washing my clothes. God said, well, if you love me and appreciate me, live like you love me and appreciate me. Huh? Somebody say, it's got to be an ongoing thing. You have to discipline yourself to shine away from the thing that you know going to keep you from giving God your best. See, it's hard to praise God when you've been sitting all week. It's hard to lift them hands up and say, huh? But when you've been praying, when you've been witnessing, you've been worshiping at home, when you come to the house of God like this morning, we all get in one mind and one accord and everybody start praying and worshiping God and running around the building. That let me know they've been seeking God. And when you come into the house of God, the man of God going to preach something that's going to leap in your spirit, and you're going to say, God been saying that to me all week. See, I used to sell dope, but now I preach hope. Watch. God is saying this morning, it's time to grab a hold to the horns of the altar and grab God and say, God, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. Who am I preaching to in the house of God? You got to be determined. Because the devil is going to try to stop you from going higher in God. Sister Eula King, you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to lay hold on eternal life. You, the reason God is attacking you so much, he's trying to get you off track to stop you from feeling what feeling his plan and will for your life is. Who am I preaching to this morning? A Christian life is no longer dictated by the world, but hidden with Christ. Amen? A Christian life should not be dictated by this world. See, a lot of Christians putting their trust in politics and government leaders and the presidents, and your trust should be in Jesus Christ. Your trust should be in the word of God. Your, you should stand on the promise of God. When you're going through something, you need to get in the word of God and find God's promise about that situation. And no matter what it looks like in reality, you keep declaring the word of God. Who am I preaching to this morning? Somebody say you got to stand on the promises of God. See, I, I would have never knew why I had access to healing till I read it in the word of God. By his stripes. You are healed. I never knew I had access to financial blessings till I read the word of God and said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Somebody say, Yo, the secret that you need to apply to your life is constant study of the word. He said, if you meditate on my word day and night, what? You're going to have what? Good success. So, Bishop, if he says good success, that implies there's got to be bad success. Oh, Who am I preaching to this morning? You're trying to be rich. You're trying to be popular. You're trying to wear all the gold. You're trying to ride on 20 and 44. But God is saying it's time to lay all that down and seek the kingdom. 
and his righteousness. He said he never saw a seed begging bread. Can I get a witness? Won't God save you? Won't God heal you? Won't God pay the bills? Won't God bless you with transportation? Won't God put a roof over your head? Won't God heal your body? Won't God heal cancer? Won't God heal lupus? Won't God heal diabetes? Can I get a witness? Let's take a 30 second praise break and give God your best praise. Hallelujah! I'm talking about Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Sekinu. Glory be to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house, Bishop. I feel something pushing me this morning. God want to save some people in this house. God want to deliver some people in this house this morning. How many need God this morning? Stand with me all over the house. Somebody said you got to be disciplined. You got to have determined obedience. Hey, you look at a man shot in the chest, died three times in a, in a medical induced coma for two weeks on life support. So dope all over Fort Worth. Pistol whooped people, shot people, left them from dead. Broken houses, stole cars. But one day I called on the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Whatever you do, Jesus, don't let me flunk life. I, you can flunk a test in school. You can flunk a quiz, but they'll give you a retake. But if you flunk life, you got one life to live. And your God and your life got to be hidden in Christ in Jesus. See, so many of us in this room, we got our life hidden in the bottle. We got our life hidden in marijuana. We got our life hidden in sexual immorality. We sleeping around, but Jesus is our Lord. Fornicating and committing adultery, but God is saying, you better clean it up. God said, I'm about to get up on that white horse. I'm about to bring 10,000 of my saints back with me. Somebody said, you got to get your house in order. Look at two or three people in the eye and say, it's time to get your house in order. Yeah. Keep on looking at them. It's time to get your house in order. It's time to get your life right. You got one life to live. Whatever you do with this life, that's what counts. Sister Hatter, if I cut down a tree, whatever the condition that tree in, when it falls, that's the way it's going to be. How many know when you disconnect yourself from the source, you're going to dry up? Jesus Christ and God the Father is the source. Are you connected? Are you hidden in Christ, in God this morning? I'm going to tell you this story. I'm going to open the altar. And I don't want anybody to procrastinate because some of you are hiding in low self-esteem. Some people are hiding in this room with pride. You're hiding in suicidal spirits. You're hiding in molestation. You've been touched and tampered with. When you was young, you've been verbally and physically abused. When I open up this altar, I want you to come down to the front and lift your hands up. And whatever you need God to do, I want you to start praying. And when you start praying and calling out to God, we're going to have some men of God and women of God to come lay hands on you. And yet there's going to be a divine transfer of power. Help me, Holy Ghost. See on the Story goes, Bishop of a crusade had came to an Indian reservation, watch. And they was having church and people were getting saved and people was jumping out of wheelchairs and the lane was being healed and blind eyes beginning to open. And an Indian come out the, the tent where the, they had a big camp meeting, a big tent was set up. And the Indian came out front and he was weeping, co passive in front of the door, tears were running down his face. Some reporters showed up on the scene, Bishop. And the porter put the mic to his, the Indian guy's mouth. You know, he spoke broken English, watch. The porter said, I see the tears running down, and I see you all emotional. What happened inside of there? The Indian, while he was crying, he kneeled down, Mother, and got a whole bunch of dead leaves and, and put them in a circle. And then he looked around, Sister Johnson, and grabbed a caterpillar, an old worm, and put him in the middle of those dead leaves. And then he took a match out of his pocket and lit the dead leaves, and fire began to circle the little caterpillar, and he had nowhere to go. And he said, he 
bent down and took his hand and lifted that caterpillar out of those burning leaves. And he looked at the reporter and said, me, worm. Somebody say, God will reach down with his grace and lift you up out of the miry clay and set your feet upon a rock and, and put a new song in your mouth and praise to our God. Won't he do it? Come on, give me praise all over the house. If you need Jesus this morning, come on down to the altar. If you need healing this morning, come on down to the altar. Make your way on down to the altar. Don't procrastinate. Come on, let's put our hands together for those that are coming. If you need deliverance. She am a rebel, she a guy. So the time to get that all out. I, I feel there's at least 12 people in here that really need to give a hold of God. I want you to come down and line up across the front and lift your hands up and begin to pray and seek God. You're scared to come down, get somebody to hold your hand and bring you on down to the altar. Go ahead, Brother Brandon. See what the Lord put on your heart. Lord, I thank you. Touch every man, touch every woman in this place. Let the power of the Holy Ghost draw them to you this morning. God is saying there's a lot of people coming to the house of God, but very few are coming to Jesus. God needs you to come to Jesus this morning. God needs you to kneel down at the foot of the cross and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior. And just tell the Lord, forgive me. I've been away. I've messed up. I'm, I'm entangled with some things, but God have mercy upon me. I repent this morning, God. Reconcile me back to the sheepfold. Use me for the purpose that you created me. Come on all over the house. She and that man. Come on, love. So the Titus get that north and off.
God for his, his awesomeness, his presence. Amen. You don't have to stop seeking God. Amen. And we thank the Lord. Amen. Before I proceed with, before I proceed with the baptism ceremony and the candidates, amen, we thank the Lord for all of our visitors being here. Amen. That came out. Amen. We thank you for being in the service, and we hope that the Lord gave you just what you need. Amen. I'm, amen, amen, amen. I believe somebody said that they needed to share something. Amen. Amen, amen. You can just tell her right where you're at. Just First of all, I want to give honor to God to be in this house. I'm grateful for who he is in the life of me and in the life of my wife. I'm thankful, Bishop, you allow us to be in the presence in your house. Thank you for having us here. Um, I, I'm just going to take a second. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. That's it. You know, I was I, I we can we've been in in Texas for seven years. This is Pastor James, and I'm Pastor James, and we pastored a Foursquare Church in Los Angeles, and God moved us to Phoenix, and we ministered there, and He said, "Come to Dallas," and we came to Dallas, and we didn't know what we were going to do here, but we've been here. We we belong to uh, another church, and then we just said, you know, Lord, what do you want with us? You know, and this is the first time we've actually been to a church of God in Christ since we've been here, and that's kind of like the background. So it felt good to be in the service. But I'm grateful to God for Brother Corey May, who invited me because he's getting baptized today. I, <clears throat> I work with him, and I've never seen a young man that is so focused on God in his life. You know, I've met a lot of them, but this young man has really... He's really there. But I just want to thank God because God, and then, then you already did it because every, all the cancer survivors, you acknowledge them. I survived cancer last year. I had prostate cancer and I survived that. <clears throat> I'm on crutches now because I'm bone on bone in my hip, but I'm going to have a surgery in another month and I'm surviving that. So I got nothing to, I got nothing to complain about. I ain't asking God for nothing because he just keeps pouring his blessings out on us. And I just wanted to say thank you. Amen, amen, amen. See, that's what we, see, God don't want us always begging. He just wants, sometimes he just say, can you just tell him thank you? Amen. Well, we appreciate you being in the service. Amen. We're going to move on to the baptism dedication at this time for the first part. In the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of of the world. This is the great commission that God gave every believer to go in the to go in the hedges and the highways and compel them to come in. Teach them the things of God. He said the things that I taught you disciples now you teach it to the world. You teach to those who will listen. In the book of Acts it reads Acts 10:44 it says and while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost filled fell upon all of them which heard the word. And they were of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? For these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. In the book of Romans, 6 chapter, verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us 
We're baptized. We're baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. Baptism does not save you. Going in the water does not save you. You are saved. The reason why you get baptized is because it identifies you with Christ. It's a, whatever took place in the heart is now going to become a, a, a public confession to the world. So water don't save you. Water don't cleanse you. Amen. What water does, it's, it's, a, it's a statement to the world that I am a believer. So you got to be saved before you go in the water. Hello. If you're not saved before you go in the water, you're just getting wet. There's nothing that took place. So water doesn't save you. I know you said, but the Bible says, except you be born of the water and the spirit. Uh -huh, but he was talking to Nicodemus. He said, you got to be born again. He said, how can I enter my mother's womb a second time when I'm old? <laughs> when I'm old. And he said, he said, Nicodemus, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. Water there was a representing baptism. Water was representing natural birth. He said, you have to be born because to be born again, you first have to participate in a thing to do it again. Hello, somebody. So he had to be born first. Now he can become born in his spirit. Because when you're born first, you're born of the old the nature of sin. Now you have to be born of the new nature. And that's what he was telling, that's what he was telling, um, telling, telling, telling Nicodemus. You got to understand that baptism is a sign, it's a representation symbolically that when you go in the water, you are burying your old man, just like Christ died on the cross. You died, that old man died. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ has risen up from the dead by the glory of, of, father, of the Father, even so also we shall walk in the newness of life. So the, rep, the, rep, the purpose of the baptism is, is to symbolically show that I've been buried with him. The old man is dead. He's buried. And then the new, when I come up out of the water, it's like the resurrection. I come in the newness of life. It's symbolic or already took place in your heart. If you haven't received him first, there's no need to be baptized. You have to be saved first because baptism don't save you. Water never saves you. Matter of fact, when Jesus got baptized, that was not the baptism we're going to experience today. There was no baptism until after the resurrection because the baptism is a symbolic statement of his death his burial, and his resurrection. When John baptized, that was not baptism. That was a sign of being clean like it did in the Old Testament. There was no baptism in the Old Testament. New Testament did not start until after resurrection. Hello, somebody. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is, Jesus said, it is finished. I fulfill the law. I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. So all you read, is, all you read until his death his resurrection is what he fulfilled in the law. That was still Old Testament. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. Where's the candidate? Would I, can I have all the candidates to stand right where you are? All the candidates. Amen. All right. No. Let me do the sermon. Do you candidates... Keep remain standing. The candidates remain standing. Do you candidates of baptism in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and upon your confession of faith in him as Savior and Lord over your life, take this step of faith as an outward sign to the world that you are a believer of the faith? If so, respond by saying, yes, I'm a believer. Can you hear? All right, all right, all right. At this time, would you come up to the altar? We want to pray over the candidates and then just line up right here. Father, we thank you for these young people. Lord, that is making an outward confession as a sign to the world that they are believers. Now, Lord, based upon their confession, Lord, that we are 
going to baptize them. And Father, we thank you for their life. And let their life be an example to the world that you are the Savior and that you are alive. Now, Lord, we pray your blessing, Lord. Give them the strength to stand with all against all the temptations of the enemy. Lord, that they would turn their back on the world, amen, and live for you. And that they will be a light in dark places. They will be the salt of the earth. This we ask in Jesus' name. One more charge I got to you, candidates. Will you, the candidates, if you, uh, you if you, you please, okay, it is your confession. It's your confession that you are a believer and that you want to make a public statement of your faith. Respond by saying yes. Amen. By your confession, and we've been through the class of baptism, you understand what baptism is. And because of your confession, we're now going to proceed with the baptism portion. What we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to file out, and those who want to, we meant to witness it, we're going to walk straight back out that back door and just kind of form around the pool, the, the trough out there, and then we're going to begin the baptism part. Um, I'm going to be baptizing, and Pastor Washington is going to baptize Amen also. Amen? So at this time, let the candidates go out first, and then right behind them, you can follow them right back. Just go straight back. Guys, just proceed that way. 